The Quran is a central text in the Islamic tradition, and Muslims claim it is of divine origin. But if that is so, then the Quran really should be taken seriously. How can we be certain that a book written more than 1400 years ago comes from God? With me to discuss the authority of the Quran, Dr. Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Center. Uh, Brother Shabir, uh, as, as I mentioned, the Quran was written so long ago. Um, we tend not to trust things in, in this age. We tend, we tend to, to be skeptical. Uh, so how can we be sure that the Quran uh, comes from God? When we say that the book comes from God, we need to put that in perspective and, and think about uh, what we mean by saying that a book comes from God mm -hmm. and what has this meant to people over time. Uh, in, in the Hebrew scriptures we have several prophets saying the word of the Lord came to me. So there is a sense in which a prophet is inspired by some message from God which he then uh, feels inclined to deliver to people. Mm -hmm. uh, the New Testament Gospels uh, are thought to be written under divine inspiration. Uh, even though uh, on the surface these uh, appear to be ordinary biographies uh, of the prophet Jesus. Uh, but a belief emerges that uh, the writers wrote under some sort of divine I inspiration. In a similar way, Muslims came to believe that the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, was a recipient of divine revelation. The word of the Lord did come to him. And uh, what he recited under this divine inspiration, that specifically was collected into what we have as the Quran today. Uh, so that the Quran is not uh, a, a simple biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. No, uh, other uh, writings were compiled, real biographies of the Prophet, uh, detailing his life from birth to death. Uh, but the, the Quran is a series of orations uh, material that was spoken on a, on a variety of occasions, uh, dealing with uh, this wide variety of issues as they arose, and, and those orations were later on compiled. Mm -hmm. And those orations Muslims believe to be uh, the uh, divine inspiration given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, uh, according to Muslim belief, the Quran is not the speech of Muhammad himself. This is uh, uh, originating from God. It is mm -hmm. God's speech delivered uh, to the Prophet Muhammad, which he was then simply uh, made the conduit for, so that God's speech now reaches us. Mm -hmm. Now that's so the basic belief. So how would you respond belief. to someone who says, well, are you sure it actually comes from God, or, or it wasn't something made up by the Prophet Muhammad himself? Uh, yes, indeed, this was your original question, and what I've said is just preamble to, to lead now Beautiful to... Useful preamble, yes. There are several reasons for thinking that Muhammad is not the author of this, of this book. Uh, one is that uh, the Prophet Muhammad, uh, according to Muslim belief, is, uh, was unlettered. And the Quran seems to confirm this, saying that he did not read a book prior, prior to this, he did not write this with his right hand. So even if he wanted to write a book, he, he, he was not a composer, he couldn't do it himself. Second, a, a psychological uh, examination here would, would, would show that this is not Muhammad's own work because the Quran speaks to Muhammad and addresses him, commands him, tells him what to do and on occasion even criticizes some of his behavior. Mm -hmm. So if he were writing the book on his own it would be very strange that he's writing a book and criticizing himself and addressing himself, commanding himself. Uh, third, uh, the, the Quran speaks about past history, telling us about things that were uh, uh, not known to Muhammad and his contemporaries. Can you give us an example uh, of that? Uh, for example, in describing the previous prophets like Noah, for example, the Quran says this is information from the unseen that we reveal unto you. It, neither you nor your contemporaries knew about this. Hmm. Uh, information about uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Uh, on so this Peace. wouldn't have been known to the people at the time? Uh, some sp very specific information, like for example, Dr. Moray's bouquet in his book, The Bible, The Quran and Science, spoke about the uh, perishing of, of the Pharaoh in, in, the, in the sea. Well, uh, from the biblical records, all we know is that Pharaoh just perished there in the sea and that's the end of him. Uh, but uh, the Quran in the 10th surah, in the 92nd verse, says, uh, this day we preserve you in terms of your body, so that you may be a sign for those who come later. According to Dr. Morris Bouquet, as detailed in his book, uh, the body of the Pharaoh was in fact uh, subsequently discovered 
and uh, it, it has become a sign for those who come later, na namely us. Uh, it, the discovery was in 1898 and first documented in a book by Sir Elliot Smith, uh, The Royal Mummies, uh, published in 1912. Uh, so the, the Quran, uh, some more than a thousand years before that, said that the body of the Pharaoh was preserved, even though the, the, we had no other record of it except the Quran's indication. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned historical references. What about future references? Does the, does the Quran make reference to anything in the future that the Prophet Muhammad could not possibly have known? Yes, several, several times the Quran speaks about things that will happen in the future, uh, things uh, in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the preservation of the Quran itself and what will happen to this book, uh, the development and progress of the Muslim community um, at a time when everything looked bleak, the Quran was promising success. And uh, from a human point of view, biographers of the Prophet Muhammad, modern biographers, Orientalist, non-Muslim scholars, looking at this think that uh, no one could have expected the mission of Islam to be successful, but the Quran kept insisting that this will happen, and in fact it did happen. Uh, sometimes some specific sort of prophecy is given, for example, now, when uh, the Romans were defeated, it looked like that was the end of the Romans at the time. But uh, the, uh, the Quran in, in the 30th chapter, uh, named Surat al Rum, uh, the chapter of the Romans, uh, spoke about an eventual victory of the, of the Romans after all of this defeat, and says that at that time, uh, the believers will delight at the victory which will come from God. Well, it so turns out that uh, within a few years, as the Quran seemed to have predicted, uh, the, not only did the Romans turn around and win a smashing victory against the Persians once again, but uh, at about the same time, the Muslims were uh, involved in what is referred to as the Battle of Badr, uh, which was a milestone in Muslim history. Uh, that, that really uh, was the moment when uh, Muslims saw the glory of God and, and the help of the angels with them in battle. Mm -hmm. Uh, so some Muslims have made reference to um, to things mentioned in the Quran that were later confirmed by science. Do you hold to that view as well? Yes, th there, are, uh, there are things which are mentioned in the Quran in the simple language that would have been understood by the Arabs uh, at the time in a very basic way. And uh, now with modern scientific insight, we understand uh, these uh, passages in a, in a deeper way and, and in a way that in fact uh, correspond to some of our more recent scientific discoveries. Take for example in, in the 51st chapter of the Quran in the 47th verse, it says, uh, as for the heavens, we created it with power and we are expanding it. Uh, the classical commentators on this, though they understood the Arabic more than we do, uh, could only say, well, God is expanding it by putting more provisions into it. Uh, but uh, nowadays we know that God is expanding it in a real sense because the universe is thought to have popped into existence from a big bang that occurred some uh, almost 14 billion years ago and that it has been expanding ever since. So the idea that the universe is expanding uh, is a very modern one. In fact, this could not have been known on or discovered prior to the use of the um, Hubble uh, telescopes. Uh, which became available in the 1930s when it was seen that the uh, stars and galaxies are moving away from each other at uh, a, a rapid speed. Uh, th and that confirmed uh, that, that the universe is expanding. In fact, it, the idea was proposed in the 1930s due to this observation and could only be, con be confirmed in 1964 uh, when uh, uh, two uh, uh, scientists, Penzias and, and Wilson, uh, won the Nobel Prize for their discovery of what is referred to as cosmic microwave background radiation. That would have been the radiation that was emitted at the moment of the Big Bang some 14 uh, billion years ago. And uh, the, the Big Bang theory of the, uh, uh, the origin of the universe uh, also entails the expansion uh, of the universe from that singularity. Mm -hmm. Are there any other arguments that you find convincing for why one should believe that the Quran is from God? Yes, one of the uh, recent uh, sorts of study that have been uh, done on the Quran is the, the, the observation of uh, the numerical correspondence of things in, in the Quran. And there are several such, we, we wouldn't have time in, in a short show uh, such as this one to uh, detail all of them, but uh, the alignment of, of chapter numbers, verse numbers, 
errors. Uh, the uh, number of words that are used to uh, formulate certain basic expressions in the Quran, uh, the number of letters that are, that are sometimes used to uh, express a certain basic idea, uh, all of these are, are now found to have a deep significance, meaningful uh, arrangements. Uh, such that the number of, of words, for example, let me give you an example so it doesn't that sound too theoretical. Yeah, helpful, yeah. Uh, the Quran says that the example of Jesus in the, in the sight of God is like Adam, because God created Adam from, from clay and then said to him, be and he was. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is that God created both Jesus and, and Adam. And this is the Muslim viewpoint regarding Jesus, that he's a servant and messenger, the Messiah of God, but still one of God's creatures. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, that's the message of the Quran, and it's done there. That's how it has been interpreted for 1400 years. But now, uh, armed with our computer systems, making it easy for us to check the number of times words are used in the Quran, one finds th that uh, the word uh, Jesus, uh, Isa in Arabic, occurs 25 times in the Quran, and the word Adam also occurs 25 times. So not only is, is God saying that, that Jesus is, is like Adam to him, but both Jesus and Adam are mentioned in the Quran exactly 25 times each. Now, that number is not coincidental. Uh, in, in a similar vein, we can uh, mention that the word for month in, in the singular occurs in the Quran uh, just 12 times, mm. uh, which is a, a, an interesting number when we speak of months. The word uh, day in the singular, yawm in Arabic, uh, without any suffixes, uh, occurs in the Quran exactly 365 times. And that too cannot be said to be co uh, by coincidence. Uh, otherwise, we'd have too many coincidences like this occurring one after another in the Quran. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time, Brother You're Shikir. welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, was the Quran changed?